I'm going to reveal to you the new colour that I've chosen for the BBS alloy wheels. Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel and welcome to episode 5 of Project Edition 30. In episodes 1 to 4 I replaced some worn out parts, I also replaced some parts on a precautionary basis. I restored the foggy headlights, I performed an oil change and I took the car for an MOT test which amazingly it passed and it can now be driven legally in the UK. Yay! If you want to catch up on all those episodes there is a link to the playlist in the description of the video below. Today we're going to give the car its first proper wash, hopefully get rid of that nasty mould that's plagued it since it was collected and then if it stops raining I'm going to give you a thorough appraisal of the bodywork, looking out for rust, damage and how original the paintwork is. And then when we've done that I'm going to reveal to you the new colour that I've chosen for the BBS alloy wheels and also their brand new centre caps. But before we do that, I want to explain to you why I actually love washing cars when the weather is this horrible. Before we move on though, I just want to say big thanks to all subscribers, new and old. Every single one means an awful lot to a channel like this one, particularly at the point where we're at now, where we're so close to getting to 50,000. So if you like what you see, then please do subscribe. I'm sure you know how to do that by now. If you don't like what you see, then just let me know through the comments, give me some ideas for content and I'll do what I can to produce it. Apart from the getting soaked bit, I love washing cars in the rain because it's like a free snow foam. It gets into all the dirt, makes it softer, makes it much easier to pressure wash off. That doesn't mean I'm not going to use a snow foam. I've got this one called Demon Foam. So this is actually my second bottle. I've got a refill that I top this up with. It's been great through the winter and its unique selling point is that you don't need a pressure washer or um, a special container or anything like that. You just use a hose pipe, connect it to the bottle that comes with this nozzle and that's your snow foam. So I think it's a good time to give it a try. Okay, well hopefully you can see it's pretty effective. Obviously there are some professional snow foams that are a lot denser. It's also been washed off by the rain a bit today, but I've used it throughout the winter and it's worked really, really well on salty cars. It's just so easy to use. Literally connects a hose pipe to it. No need for a pressure washer, no need for any power. It's pretty good. It's about 12 pounds for this bottle with the sprayer and then refills are about 10 pounds. So it's not an expensive snow foam either. Right, we'll leave that to dwell for a bit and then We'll get onto it with the pressure washer and hopefully get all that nasty mould off. Okay, now for the soapy wash. You can go really OCD with this, but I think at this early stage on this car where we haven't prepped the paintwork in any way, you don't really need to do that. I'm going to use a wash mitt, which I always use. This is from G-Technic. Had it about a year now and it's still like brand new. I'm using a shampoo. I'm not particularly fussy about what shampoos I use as long as they're pH neutral. This one was from Amazon. It was about £8.50 for five litres and it's really quite soapy, especially when you get the pressure washer in it. Yeah, so that's pretty decent. And um, another reason why I like washing cars on a wet day is because they don't dry off between the bits of the process. So there's a little bit of drizzle now, which is just perfect for keeping the black paint uh, wet. The sun's trying to come out, which isn't great for black. Um, so you best get cracking then.
Okay, now the paintwork is squeaky clean, but it's just a little bit too wet to bother drying it off. So we'll have a look at the paintwork later on when it stops raining. In the meantime, I thought it would be a good time to refit the original BBS alloy wheels. Now, just to recap, the wheels were very similar to the ones in Edition 30 should have, but instead of being the Volkswagen version made by BBS, they were just the BBS version called the VZ. Big difference is that the offset is slightly greater, so they're an ET44 rather than an ET51. The good news is it gives the car a bit more stance. The bad news was that they were a little bit too dark. The original Pescaras have got smoky silver, which is quite subtle. These were verging on grey. And on a black car, I just think they looked not very good. They weren't very flattering. They just looked dirty. So I've gone for a different colour, which I hope you guys will like. It's not particularly adventurous, but I just think it flatters uh, any car, particularly a black one. Now, before we fit them, we've got to take off these temporary wheels. And I thought it's April uh, soon. The gritters have hopefully gone away for the spring. It's a good time to clean in the wheel arches. So when we've got these wheels off, I'll just get the pressure washer into the arches, get any muck out, and then we'll get the new wheels on. Now, before we get pressure washing, I just want to give the inner arches a spray of traffic film remover. It's a mild acid that will get rid of all the muck that's accumulated in there. At some point in the summer, we definitely need to get into the arches again and apply some protective wax because there's a little bit of corrosion just there on the sort of the chassis leg where the, the brake hoses are connected, um, which isn't particularly nice. But for now, let's just give them a good clean. It's also a good time to look at your brake discs and pads as well. Just see how much meat is left on them, check for any lips on the discs. Now, before we refit the wheels, it's really important to dry off your wheel bolts and your hub, because if you don't, you might find corrosion makes it really, really hard to get your wheels off in the future. Also, if your hub is a bit corroded, it's a good time to clean it off and give it a coat of grease. Likewise, with the bolts, both of these on this car are already greased up, so that makes life a lot easier. And that means we can get straight on to fitting the wheels. And of course, I haven't forgotten the all-important centre cap. So there's a bit of a story here. When I collected the car, it had the Volkswagen centre cap in the middle of the wheels, just like the original Pescara wheels would do. But the big difference between Pes Pescaras and these BBS VZs, apart from the offset being greater on the BBS version, is that the hole for the centre cap is much bigger as well. I don't think there's a Volkswagen cap that actually fits. It turns out they've been bonded in place, which wasn't something I want to have to repeat once they've been refurbished. So the only solution, and it's a pretty good solution, was to go for a genuine BBS cap in the correct 70mm size. So I got these from PW Motorsport in South Wales. They're a BBS accessory dealer. I think they'll also get you wheels as well, so check out their website. I wanted black and silver. The only option really was to go for a carbon fibre background, but I think that's just a bit naff on this black and silver car. I think a black background with a silver BBS badge is perfection. Let's fit them and see. Let's hope they fit. Oh yeah, very reassuring clunk. They're not going to come off. That's also a testament to the quality of the refurbishment because there's not so much paint on these wheels that you can't actually fit these centre caps and they're obviously a very tight fit normally because they fit perfectly now. I could have fitted it horizontally, couldn't I, at least for once in this car's time on camera. 
So there we go guys, as you can see I've gone for the straightest, brightest, cleanest silver I can possibly get and that's because when these wheels were new they would have been supplied in this colour. I know that because I had a set on my previous Project Edition 30 and I had one of them refurbished by Prestige Wheel Centre and they did a perfect match to the original three so I just said can you do the same again for these wheels and yeah they look I think great. I, the Pescara's in their sort of grey colour are okay and at the time when the Edition 30 came out that was quite a trendy thing to do but I think if you take out being original and just do the wheels in the colour that suits the car the most then I think a bright silver on this black car is as good as it gets. I'm particularly proud to have the BBS logo on my BBS wheels on my special edition GTI because BBS and GTIs go back many many decades. Okay the weather seems to be drying off at last so it's a good time to get the microfibers out, get the paintwork dry and give you a proper in-depth look at the quality of the paintwork on Project Edition 30. Okay the light's not ideal for inspecting paintwork but at least the car is clean and dry so let's let's have a go. I always start at the roof because it's easy to overlook this and any damage here can be quite expensive to sort. You usually get damage from bird poo or from roof bars being fitted or just dents from things landing on the roof say in people's garages. Also check the front of the roof for stone chips because it is quite exposed and they can get quite bad quite quickly here. That's good. While you're up here check the A pillars for chips. Nothing really to report here. So that's all good. Right let's move to the quarter panel. This is the angle that you should look at a car from because it reveals lots of often bad things about cars. We're looking for dents, we're looking for signs of filler, we're also looking at the amount of orange peel because all mass-produced cars should have orange peel. If they're too smooth or it's inconsistent then you know it's been painted. Looking down here it's pretty good. There's some parking dents in the quarter and, and the door but they're manageable. A paintless dent removal guy will get that out no problem. Yeah it's good. Always check here on a Mark 5 where the bumper meets the quarter panel because the bumper can rub the quarter panel and corrosion sets in and there is actually a tiny bit there that I can feel I can't really see. There's a little scratch there on the lip which we can polish out and there as well but the lip's pretty good. It's not unknown to get corrosion of the rear wheel arches if people have fitted um, big wheels and low suspension that rubs the paintwork even if they're not on the car now it's worth checking for that as I mentioned in episode one there's a bit of corrosion down here which isn't ideal it's going to be a big job to, re to fix that really it's going to involve painting most of the car so we'll leave that for a bit there's a scratch there that will polish a few little chips all over the car a scratch there the edge of the moldings damaged a bit the door edge is okay but it feels a bit rough so I think it's been touched in there's a bit of scratching around the door handle there which is normal uh, yeah not too bad down here though it's not great there's a bit of corrosion at the front of the door don't know how you'd get that really it's, unless it was damaged when the wing was replaced there's this corrosion down here as well on the sill under the wing which is not unusual on Mark 5 so definitely worth checking but the wing unusually is mint and that's because it's new and the panel gaps are actually very very good I would say though it looks a little bit low here because when the car's painted it's assembled the wing is on the body and you, there's no paint down here and that's because the original wing would have been a little bit higher so that's a bit of a shame but other than that it's great it looks mint there's just a little chip there so if that's a pattern wing which I think it might be either it's been fitted very very well or it's a good wing anyway let's have a look at the front then now bonnet obviously really exposed Mark 5's chip really badly here we've got loads of little chips but actually for 70,000 miles I can tell you right now this is not original paint just purely by the lack of chips also if I look carefully at the lacquer there's some inconsistencies here and there it's not bad but it's just a little hint that this isn't original I say it's no real surprise uh, the headlights which have been polished they're not chippy so that's good and the front bumper actually is really good I wouldn't paint it and that's sort of testament to its low mileage down here though the body coloured front valance on these edition 30s it's chippy also it's got a scuff here and I've painted these many times it's probably the only thing you need to do they do get battered for some reason they chip a lot worse than the, the bumper just above there it's almost like the paint isn't as good so I think we'll paint that it should liven the car up a lot we've got rid of the mold yay so this looks a lot better 
will it probably look quite faded still so maybe in the future we'll replace these with the new ones and they do look really nice and fresh right let's have a look at the back and the passenger side now Okay, at the back, I'd start off by looking at the rear spoiler because to replace the third brake light, you really need to remove this to do a proper job. And some people may not have put it back on properly, but this one looks okay. Have a look at the glass for scratches. There is a bit round there. And then have a good look at the tailgate. Corrosion at the bottom of the badge here is not unusual, but this is actually okay. Yeah, some light scratching here, but it should polish out. Top of the rear bumper very prone to damage and we do have some most of this i think will polish out there's the odd chip here that's been touched in we can touch that in better so that's okay down here there's some red paint from something not sure what is that scratch that's just dirt there's an abrasion there that's quite light and is here as well that should really polish if it doesn't we might need to paint this lower rear section we've got a bit of a scratch here on the lights check these carefully because they're old cars now and damage can mount up. There's abrasions all over these actually. So I think we probably need a new set ideally to make it look perfect. Onto the side of the car. And actually let's start again with the roof. Nothing to report, that's good. Quarter panel, again, it's a big panel. It looks nice, shiny and black, but if you look closely, there is stuff happening. So again, we've got a little bit of corrosion just starting here. The arch itself is has got some corrosion just here, just starting there. There's corrosion down here that there is on the driver's side, but not as bad. Car park dents there. And actually on this door, the edge has been folded in a little bit, which is pretty unsightly. A dead man can fix that. But yeah, that's not great. It's obviously damaged the paint as well, so that'll need touching in. Edge of the molding damaged, little chip there. Scratches there bottom of the door on this side is okay a couple of little minor scratches a few chips on there to be expected nothing really to report down here that seems to fit better on this side than the other side because I can't see as much of the unpainted area though it just seems to be a little bit proud just here but this gap's really good again corrosion at the bottom of the sill not ideal and uh, the wing is really good but again some light scratches that need polishing but it's nice not to see a rusty wing so yeah that's that's good well i hope you've enjoyed that candid appraisal of the paintwork condition on project edition 30. i'm sure it looks amazing on video right now but as the previous footage has shown there's quite a few little bits and pieces i'll need to deal with some quite quickly some in the longer term to keep it looking as good as it does today but I think that's pretty typical of most Mark 5 Golf GTIs because it's worth remembering at the end of next year it will have been 20 years since the first ones arrived in the UK so they are getting on a bit. I don't think they're as durable as a Mark 2 Golf GTI which is a real shame but they're better than the Mark 3 so they've both got rust issues but they don't seem to be as bad on the Mark 5 or at least not at the same age. And that's really good news because the Mark III GTI was a good car, but it wasn't a particularly good drive. The Mark V GTI is absolutely brilliant to drive. And they, the more we can keep on the roads, the better, because they were amazing to drive when they came out in 2004, and they still are today. Thanks as ever, guys, for watching this Volks Wizard video. Big thanks also to Prestige Wheel Centre for doing the refurbishment on the wheels really quickly and to a really really high standard if you want your wheels done in any color even the correct edition 30 color then get in touch with them i'll put a link in the description of the video below keep subscribing keep commenting and i'll see you for the next one very soon